have a season for that. It's a bad cow for out of the bye week. So it's time to really lock in to see who is for real and who is not. Because we're going to go through the top 10 here and the current top 10 and really see who is a contender and who is a pretender. And in this case, I am not talking. There, there's a couple of ways we can play this. Time. I am not talking finals contender. I'm talking flag contender. We're going big here. We're okay. going flag legitimate okay. statement contender here. All right. So mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to get as many yeses as you know you think for just finals, but that's where the fun comes in to see who is legit this last half of the season. But start us off number ten currently sitting uh, at that spot on the ladder. We got the Western Bulldogs. Sonny, can they win the flag? Uh, current form, no. Uh, this is a pretender because defensively they are just too fragile. They, they, if they don't win it in the midfield and if they don't kick goals, they're not going to win games because they can't hold people down. And the GWS yeah. game was perfect excuse to that. Their their defense is okay. It's just not. It's just not elite enough to be able to hold teams down. So, when it comes to final and flag contenders, they're a pretender in my opinion. Now, it's stepping up to number nine, the Collingwood Magpies. Of course, they are. Anyone with Mason Cox is a guaranteed flag contender, right? Oh, Collingwood. <laughs> I just – I'm going to say pretender only because I think that they're they're riding the wave, and I am worried, really worried, that the Jordan Degoe, Jack Genevin, and Isaac Queen or dramas – on TikTok, oh, the TikTok I think drama. I, I think are going. I think could be, they could be huge anchors to this team over the next few rounds because people are going to not be talking about their their great form, but be talking about can they win without Jordy? Can they win? Can they can they win without Jordan Degoe on there? And I don't think Jordan Degoe is that impactful a player. He's too inconsistent, in my opinion. I'm glad we're on the same is page. he a is he a match winner? Yes, but I, I I kind of put him in that same category as Jake Stringer. Not sure if he's worth they his contract. Be, at they can be they can be match winners that are absolutely a pain in the you know what to solve and can help you win. <laughs> but they can have games where they are they are they disappear into the night mm -hmm. and you have no idea what they're doing but they ain't doing anything positive they're not so, doing what they're getting paid to do that's for damn sure <laughs> so so not having him there the discussion point uh, i just I, i'm gonna put collingwood in the pretender mm -hmm. i think in the next couple of years if they keep this group together keep them strong keep them healthy then Collingwood's being discussed in that flag contender. I just think this year getting in the finals will be an accomplishment. And I don't mean that as a diss to the Collingwood Magpies. I just think that's an accomplishment because new coach, kind of a change to their system, a change in style. It's worked, but will it sustain itself to be consistent is the biggest question. Mm. That's a good one right there. Um, I think we know our answer for our next team. Breaking into the finals now. We've taken a look at the eighth team. St. Kilda. Uh, definitely contenders, right? Uh, St. Kilda, uh, again, current form I'm going off of pretender. Yeah. I don't like the way their midfield is played. Peak that they've looked this season, it's still there, there's still there's still some there's still some yeah. holes that I don't like. And the fact that and the fact that the that that um that that um Oh my gosh! Why can I never remember what King is on St. Kilda? My gosh, Max King, Max, if I yeah. remember correctly, <laughs> the longer Max hair, King, right? <laughs> Max King is on St. Kilda. I, he's just too inconsistent. He's an incredible marking forward, but he's just too inconsistent. I, I think, and the fact that Higgins and Butler are not consistent as well, you, you got to be pretty darn consistent come finals because missing kicks on goal really hurt you in the finals even more mm -hmm. so i think st kilda is a pretender but they're, they're one of those teams on their best they can beat anybody but on their worst they can be beaten by anybody including north melbourne um step up to number <laughs> seven <laughs> i feel like like that's a clue there because even that's a stretch um number seven a team that is another one of those men uh, but even a step above St. Kilda, when they're on, they are on in the uh, Sydney Swans. But when they're off, they've been off a little bit. But even when they're off, they're still normally close games here. But the Sydney Swans, contender, pretender. 
Oh, this hurts my heart so oh. much, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say pretender because of their inconsistencies. I I said it a little bit. Was last year a little bit of uh, them catching teams off guard, them catching the competition by surprise of the change in style because they went from a kind of a halfback slingshot defensive style team to a quick ball movement pinpoint kicking team. And I think it caught some teams off guard last year. And I think it really helped them win a lot of games that they weren't expecting to win, especially early in the year. This year, teams have kind of figured it out and some defensive frailties and some just plain brain fades by the (laughs) Swans defensively, giving up huge goal markers, nine goals, seven goals, six goals, six goals, eight goals. You can't do that. You just can't. Will they make finals? I think they can. I think they're just consistent enough. They'll get in. I just don't think we see them past the, I just don't see, think we see them past the semifinals. I think prelims is the furthest they go. And that's a stretch because of some of the teams that are ahead of them. So I'm going to say pretender, but if I'm as a Swans fan, I'm going to put my Swans hat on just for a tiny second. Keep an eye out because if they get consistent, then they could be deadly over these next two or three seasons. I don't think Sydney's dead for the next uh, for for this season, uh, even for that. But also it's the same thing is something you talked about as well. They're kind of early. They're pretty early on their team building here. They they they're not they haven't peaked, and especially if you're just looking from a, a club management perspective as well. They were not expecting the Sydney Swans to be this good this soon. So well, that- and. and- can I throw in this little tiny bit of information? And, and I know several people might have already seen this. Sydney and Buddy Franklin are already in talks for a one-year contact extension. Even better. And by what I'm hearing, it could be a significant pay cut, which would then open up money to be able to afford their youngsters oh. to keep them in. And not to not to shake the cage of the victorian media but that money could also be used to bring in dusty Dusty martin if they wanted to it's happening (laughs) it's let's let's again unfortunately i'm still hearing way too many journos talking about it which means it's still in discussion points which means they're still the the biggest thing will be financially how will it happen because buddy's not going to drop all of his finances i mean half even half is a significant decrease but does Sydney have the salary cap room to bring in Dusty and not cost themselves a youngster? So that's that'll be the watch and see over this offseason this year. Screw it, Donnie. I'm on board. Is who Dusty? Dusty to Sydney. <laughs> we'll have to see. I'll shoot the gun. I'm 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 hesitant on that one, honestly. Yeah. I'm I'm hesitant on that one. And I've well, said we, that and we'll continue um, to say that. If you guys really want to hear more in-depth talks about that, I think this news story kind of came up like uh, I think about a month ago is when a lot of people really started to talk about it. So that's over um on, on our YouTube channel, um, Dusty Martin Swans. We give our I think 10 minutes <laughs> in-depth talking about that one as well. Um Donnie does a great job breaking down everything. We give our, our full thoughts, so go ahead, um, check that video out. Um, but speaking about Dusty Martin, contender, pretender, the Richmond Tigers saving pretty number six. They make the biggest jump um, this round when it comes to finals pos- in ladder position. They might be catching fire right now, Donnie. Well, here's here's my here's my first. Honestly, if if Richmond can play their style and that's that chaos footy, they are a contender. Mm. And this is and this this is an interesting for some people. This is this is not a surprising call because yeah. Richmond style holds up in in finals footy because it's chaos. It's much there's much more heat. There's much more pressure, and their style works because they play the forge it forward, use their hand, use their skill, and then be able to bury it when they can. They are a contender in my opinion because again their style and they have the experience. But I'm still a little hesitant because they've struggled sometimes with some of the better teams in the eight. So will they even get that opportunity will be the biggest question mm-hmm. by, by what they can. And I'm, I'm kind of, and this is really weird because I've been staying on form on form on form. This is not an on form call. This is on past and what I've seen. It's this a potential. Season. It's a potential call. They are a contender. If they play their style, That's if they good. get forced to play somebody else's, they won't. So of course. contender because of experience, and what they can do in the finals with their style. 
and it will also help when it comes finals for them that it, it's looking very likely that there's going to be a uh, extra spot open at the top four for them to scoot themselves on into once Melvin kind of uh, <laughs> falls out. <laughs> You're jumping all over that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to do it. Uh, but seven number five, the Carlton Blues. This is, again, you look at it, fifth place on the ladder, 36 points, but the low percentage of 112, which is the lowest of any of the top eight yeah. sides. I think they're a pretender weird, because of the injuries mm -hmm. and because they have shown frailties. Again, because of those injuries, that might cost them some games, which may put them in the bottom part of the eight, and it is very, very difficult to win a grand final and get to a grand final as a fifth through eight seed. So I'm going to say Carlton is a pretender because I just think these injuries are going to catch up with them. Mm -hmm. A stronger part of the end of the season where they're playing some of the better teams in the league, I just think they're not going to be in flag contention. I still think they make the finals. I mm -hmm. still think they will be a tough out. I just don't see them getting to the last day in September and playing for a for a flag. I agree. They are a final scheme through and through. At least they they should be. Um, it will take a lot for them to drop out. But flag team, that's a different question at this point. But I'm hopping mm -hmm. to the current top four right now, the Geelong Cats. Who uh, All right, and I, I, I'm I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna save you a little bit. I'm gonna save you a little bit of time, Ross. Yep. We're gonna run through these four through one. They're all flag. They're all contenders in my opinion. Even they're, they're not. They're not in the top four. Because they're not in the top four for no reason. Okay. Geelong, Geelong, I think, with the experience and talent that they have, they can win. They're playing a different style of footy. Fremantle, if they can get a top four spot and be able to play at home for some of their games, that is a tough place to play. They're up and about. They've got a style that is just a pain in the ass to stop because defensively, they're one of the best teams in the entire competition. Uh -huh. Offensively, they are progressing at a scary rate yeah. when they can. Yeah. Melbourne, again, they've won a grand final. They've got a ton of talent. They've got a ton of superstars. If they find whatever they've lost i'm still not sure what it is if they find it heaven forbid this league because they can be an <laughs> animal in the finals no matter where they end up if they get in and the brisbane lions there's just so much offensive firepower it's ridiculous that they man. are going to be in a pain to stop their biggest issue sense. a lot like carlton is defensive on the defensive side of the footy yep. can they stop teams from scoring if they can brisbane could be the foil to the melbourne Demon demons back to back or Fremantle's chance at winning flag mantles moniker forever so i think the top four are all contenders i think richmond and the top four are the five teams right now i see as being your flag contenders I just I worry about Carlton, I worry about Sydney, and I worry about St. Kilda right now. And even the teams outside, I just don't think they're there. I think yeah. they all have a chance of making the finals because they all have something they do very well. But those five teams right now are my contenders. Richmond's hanging on by a thread. If Richmond drops a game to say a Fremantle at Geelong and Melbourne at Brisbane, mm -hmm. then I probably take their name out of that proverbial pool yeah, and leave win. it to those top four sides. Honestly, in, in my per, in my personal opinion, I think the top four is set. I think those four teams are going to be the top four. I think Melbourne will get there, you know what, together, and I think they'll be fine. Hmm. But I guess so. It, yeah, that's going to be. They a would, but they would also. The scary part is they could also be the one. They them could they could also be the one team that drops out and has Richmond come in mm -hmm. because Richmond has an, a relatively favorable schedule. And if they can win games, you could see Richmond in the four. And if Richmond make the four, then they're still in that contender. They're still in that contender moniker. You want to middle. be fair though, it to, to be at this point of the season, but to still have five, um, it, it's at least four legitimate flat contenders, if not five, that is um, gonna lead to a heck of a last bit of the season. Um, to see if maybe people can jump in, jump out of that, but. If we got some parity right now. If Carlton didn't have their injuries, I'd have them there because yeah. their their style is so hard to stop busy because they're they're contested footy beasts. If Sydney didn't have this whoopsie quarters where they give up eight, nine or eight, nine or seven, eight or nine goals, they're there. 
St. Kilda early in the season was a flying contender. Yes. It's just right now. I, it's, it's, it's hard to say who's, who's a contender pretender because there's still so much footy still to be yes, played. There is. I mean, if we played this game in six weeks, we could be down to three teams. 